we kind of wanted to put everything up from the beginning just to kind of show where we started and kind of where we're going with it so yeah it's the true start of our journey and like regardless of how bad quality it was and how inexperienced we were because we weren't really sure we were going to do anything like this and stuff it's still you know the start of our journey we wanted to include that and for you guys to see yeah had we known we were going to make a youtube we obviously would have gotten a real camera and not taken things off of our phone or yeah, anything. Yeah, the GoPro but, And I was using difference. like vertical too, which I should, if I was horizontal, it wouldn't have been as bad, but I wasn't thinking, mm. a lot of the footage was just for like family and friends, but. And the wind and everything, we'll yeah. have to eventually get something for that. But like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's a work in progress. It's a true work in progress. Yeah. It's not like all the fancy bells and whistles that you usually see. It's a true, from the bottom to the top, hopefully one day. <laughs> Alex and I decided that the Tanzer 22 was going to be too much work and we also decided we wanted something bigger to start it with as well. Off to see boat number two. Another beautiful day. There's the traffic we're driving in. We had to make a quick stop in uh, Cornwall because our tire blew but it all worked out. We got it all patched up for good this time. Yeah, we got another, what do we got left in kilometers? 35. 35, so it's getting tight, it's getting tight. Hopefully this is the one. We'll see. <laughs> so we decided on the Tanzer 26. I can't believe we just bought a boat. We're so excited. Hi, I'm Crystal. I'm Alex. Um, we bought our first sailboat ever, the Tanzer 26, um, this past summer. We have never sailed before in our lives. No, no experience whatsoever. I've been on boats and stuff before, but that's pretty much about it. Sailboats were completely new to us. I don't know who else has bought in a boat without getting their boater's license, but we did. So we finally got our boater's license in the mail, and now we can officially um, drive our boat. Woo! <laughs> um, we studied really hard online together and had a couple drinks and passed with flying cars. Yeah, so we... First time out of the marina, we had a little bit of struggles and did a full-on circle, but we made it! Yeah. We made it out! And then we even have a little Dexter, too. There's Dexter! So day two in our boat. It's been raining like crazy, and we found some leaks, unfortunately, but at least we know where they're all coming from, so we can fix them. Here is Alex just working hard, getting the leaks. We ripped up all the floor. We have a big leak coming in there from somewhere. Oh. But we closed all the hatches and everything and made sure that everything stayed dry. Except Dexter. Dexter got a little wet. Didn't you, baby? Yes, you did. It was a crazy snow. Just found out the hatch leaks too. Sad. The one thing that hasn't failed us yet is our coffee maker. Well, our stove with our Tim Hortons coffee, super good. And this beautiful French press that we bought to go with our coffee. <sighs> so the last few days have been a little bit crazy. We got out sailing on Saturday, which is really nice. And Alex did a really nice dock. 
and then we have not had good weather ever since so that kind of sucks and we were supposed to have some people come up today to help us learn how to sail because we don't know what we're doing and that didn't happen either so yeah so we're just gonna try to figure it out and do some more cleaning and getting the boat ready for our sail back in 12 days which we again have no experience so this is gonna be fun good vibes you're out there what <laughs> Our first trip is going to be approximately 129 nautical miles. We're going to be sailing from Marina de Valley Field in Quebec, which is where we bought our boat from. And then we are gonna be traveling down the St. Lawrence Seaway through two locks. The first one is the Eisenhower Locks, which is just located outside of Messina, New York. And then we're going to be traveling down to the Iroquois Locks. And then we're making our way all the way down to Kingston, Ontario, to Collins Bay Marina, which is where we're going to be keeping our boat. Okay, so we just put up our mainsail for the first time, which was went really well. There's a few things that we found where the um, bolt kind of fell out, so we had to replace that. We had like a bit of issues just with the boom kind of coming up, so we're gonna replace that with a few washers, which we're gonna do right now. We actually had some leaking last night, and um, there was a caulk job done, and it was really messy, so we were going through the boxes, and we found this, which is a hot glue gun. Not the right stuff. So just as good as caulking. For caulking, which is probably why all the leaks are still leaking, which explains a lot, and it looks really messy, so we just thought he did a bad caulk job, but it's actually a hot coat glue gun, so 95% fun. And we're just going through the boxes now, and we're going to go replace some stuff on the boom, and hopefully that will work. So we're just fixing this little spot here with some washers this part here kind of ripped up when we were putting up our mainsail. Not good. Not good at all. And then I'm just going to show some of the spots where it was clearly hot glue guns. Sweet cock. Where is some spots where it was hot glue gun? There. No, look, at, look at this. This one's nice. So some, some spots. We thought it was just a really bad caulking job, but it is clearly hot glue gun. Yeah, look at that baby. Oh, it is not. <laughs> Good at all. It's not gonna work. <laughs> so we're on our journey back home after buying our first boat. Got a pump out and got some gas and now we're ready. We've also got Alex's dad here with us to help us as well. well I'm excited. All right, we got our sails up. Got the sails up for the first time by ourselves. Well, and the help of Alex's dad. Yeah, wind's right going there. pretty good. Trimming the sails, <laughs> looking good. Alex is steering and yeah. I was navigating, but I guess they don't need me for that anymore. So I'm just going to enjoy it. Looks nice. It's not, not going very fast because it's really dead mm -hmm. wind, but it's a good time to practice for the first time. Oh, this so, is perfect. yeah, looks good. Sail looks good. I'm just gonna turn. Top whatever right now, babe. Got our Genoa up now, and we got our mainsail up, and we were going four knots there for a little while. We're all good, having a good time. Yeah. It's gotten a little bit breezy, which is good. So hopefully we make our first anchor. All right, so we've got a gull wing sail or a wing to, wing on wing sail going on. Which is nice because we're kind of pretty much going right downwind, so we've got it nice and trimmed. And we're still going about three to four knots in between. Looks good. We had to move our anchorage a bit because we we're taking a little bit longer than expected. Um, so we moved it in a little bit, but that'll be nice. We're just enjoying sailing, so. Okay, so we got pretty far further than we thought we were gonna get. We're like a couple hours away from Cornwall. Well, so. about the same, but we left later, so. Yeah, so not out. too bad. Um, and then we got to watch the nice sunset go down, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty day. Made some sandwiches on board, and then we're gonna have maybe a couple drinks and some barbecue. Yeah. And there's a Captain Dan. Captain, that's not Captain, I'm crew. <laughs> and I don't know what this couple drinks means. <laughs> 
All right, we'll check back in the morning. This is our little setup. Our two lights are broken, unfortunately. They broke when we were setting them up, but super cute. We got our little back lights. The first day we did about 20 nautical miles. We spent the first half of the day loading up the boat and messing around in the big open areas just to learn how to put up our sails properly and how to use them differently. So we ended up having to move up our anchorage. We went to just a spot that looked good and that wasn't actually a real anchorage. So we didn't realize until the next morning that you can actually continue sailing through um, the two islands that we had picked because the water depth was actually really shallow and we couldn't cut across either because it was also shallow there as well. So we ended up having to backtrack and we lost quite a bit of time, um, but that was a good learning experience for us is to actually look around your surroundings before picking a spot. We uh, are almost on our way to the Eisenhower Locks and just gonna pass through Cornwall. Actually, going with the wind, even though we're against the current today, which is awesome. The Eisenhower locks are located just outside of Messina, New York. So they are an American lock. They consist of 36 feet of water for both locks. The cost of it was at the end $60 Canadian. You can pay in US as well. It was pretty easy to navigate through. There is a green light that will come on that will tell you when it's ready and they tell you where to go. There is a yellow flotation device where we just tied off to and you just tie your boat off because it is quite a long process and it moves pretty slow as well. So we just tied up one line from the bow and one line from the stern to the buoy line and that was pretty much it. Super easy to go through. We were a little nervous because when I was looking online, I couldn't find any information about these locks. So I just wanted to kind of let you guys all know how easy the process was and how much it costed as well. Hey, what's going on? So here we are sitting at the the first lock of our uh, two lock journey. Today was a really good sail for most of it. And then we stopped for uh, a brunch more or less. And we lost a little bit of our wind. We were able to get a couple more jibes in and stuff like that. It makes some solid ground. But the wind started dying down and it got to a point where we had to throw the motor on for the last uh, probably hour or so. But yeah, today was good. We got another a lot of sailing in this morning. It was good sailing too. Yeah, lots of sailing. It was awesome. Yeah. There's your update. It's just closed, so that means I think we're going to be going up here shortly. Watching the boats go up a lot and now I'm actually in one. It's seriously so cool. And we're almost to the top. Day two we did about 29 nautical miles. We did a lot of pointless sailing because we ended up having to backtrack from our anchorage near Butternut Island, which I already talked about. And then we also had to kind of go off course to drop Alex's dad off in Long Sioux. We did get through the Eisenhower locks though, which was really nice. 
So that was like a big kind of step for us that day because we had both never been through a lock before. We kind of got some help from people at the Stormont Yacht Club. They were super, super nice and I highly recommend stopping there if you are in Long Sioux. They were shut down due to COVID, but we did have some troubles, which I'll talk about in our next video. I don't recommend going into the Long Sioux Marina because it is very, very shallow. On the Navionics, it does not tell depths or anything like that. Um, but when we got there, it was pretty much like for really tiny boats and we didn't realize because that's where we were supposed to drop off Alex's dad. So we ended up having to drop him off at the Yacht Club and they let us dock there. So that was really nice. But yeah, so I very highly recommend the Stormont Yacht Club. They were so nice and very, very helpful. Yeah, have you been liking everything so far? We got a lot more other stuff coming up. Make sure to give us a like and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> What do I do with my hands? What? <laughs> it looks so funny. I'm gonna hit that up. <laughs> Where are you going with that one? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. But I was like, hey. <laughs> hey. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs> Last night um, we had kind of a crazy situation. We got stuck in two feet of rocks. Um, I didn't get to video it just because it was kind of a stressful situation. Um, but we kind of tried to make a, a kind of a quick corner and we went outside the buoy line and got stuck. Um, luckily someone was able to come and help us. We ended up tying off like our jib sheet line to um, or like our jib halyard to another boat and then they were able to kind of tip us sideways to get our keel unstuck and then we motored had our motor on and just kind of motored out of the area while we were like tipped sideways. Um, it was pretty pretty nerve-wracking um, especially being only day two but uh, I guess you, li you live and you learn and now we're we're all good and we got to stay at this mooring spot so everything's good and then we'll be on our way after we kind of get everything organized a lot of stuff fell in our boat and everything so yeah anything you want to say no <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we got stuck in some rocks we looked at Nevionics and it did show that we had 6.6 .6 feet of water, so we thought we were fine. But if you scroll past a little bit further, it does show a caution area, which we realized a little too late. We felt a few little thumps and knew we were hitting bottom, and then by then we were wedged into some rocks. Luckily, we were just right outside the Stormont Yacht Club and they did see us get stuck, so they sent a boat over to help us. And they also offered us to um, more out front of the marina for free, which was really nice as well because it was nighttime by the time we did get out and organized so yeah that was really nice that we didn't have to go find anchorage or anything so we moored off for the night now we found this tiny little mooring spot and someone allowed us to come in here we put our rope around the bottom of it and then we also just did an extra little tie around the top just in case just because it was a little windy last night um this is it here And now we're just gonna make some coffee and enjoy the morning. We're trying to get back onto the um, St. Lawrence Seaway, but yeah, we're just in a little cold area because we had to drop Alex's dad off at a marina last night. Um, yeah, so hopefully we'll make it a good time and get back on the St. Lawrence Seaway and then hopefully we can get some wind. Okay, so we have no wind today. Uh, we put up our main sail just for fun, but it's not catching anything. So we're pretty much motoring all the way from now on. We're just Motor in. It. <laughs> we did find a cute little spot to um, stop our boat and go for a nice little swim. This was just on our way back to the St. Lawrence River, getting back on course. So we took this little narrow passage through and were able to anchor the boat.
we kept the motor running because going through the Eisenhower locks the day before, I left the radio on and accidentally killed our motor battery. So after it was finally charged up, we just kept it on just to be safe. ships here still motoring haven't gotten really any wind the sun looks beautiful there's a skipper yeah first ship <laughs> gonna hit some weight first ship awesome here's the waves from the big charter boat they're not actually that bad. They're a little bit. Oh, they're a little bad. Not too bad though. Nothing. I was expecting them to be bigger for sure. That's pretty awesome then. Nothing to worry about. Finally got some wind. We put our sails up. I should have videoed us putting it up, but we're getting perfect wind. Like we got all of our telltales pointing out. Actually, I might just tighten it a little bit more. There's all four. There we go. That's what I wanted. Just had to tighten that one up. We're just going to sail with the main sail today just because it's our first day on our own without Alex's dad. And it looks like there might be a storm coming in too. So yeah. if we got to drop the main, it's, that's way easier than two sails. So yeah, we'll just rock the main for a bit. I think we're just catching the tail end of the storm if you want to show over there. Yeah. I think we're passing it. But this way, if shit gets sour, we're only dropping one sail instead of two. Yeah, but the storm came at perfect time. We didn't think we were going to get to sail at all today. We had a little bit of wind and it didn't work out. So we had to stop because we had a little bit of engine problems. There was some smoke coming out of our back, back end. So we had to pull it over and we had a bunch of seaweed wrapped around our um, propeller. Yeah, I think hopefully that's all it was. I, I, there was a bunch of seaweed wrapped around the, the propeller. and So it was working harder than it should have. So it was revving harder and the engine was heating up. And I hope that's all it was since we haven't had the problem since. But... Yeah, something to check out later. There's a little, little loon over there. But yeah, so we finally got this tail end storm wind and now we get to actually sail. It's friggin' beautiful out today. It looks amazing. There's a little island here and it's got some big shoals. So we're trying to avoid that area. You can kind of see where the shoals are where it kind of gets a little shallow. So we're trying to avoid that. got all of them flapping again. I gotta maybe loosen it out a bit. So day three, we did about 18 nautical miles. We got off to a slow start because we had to organize our boat from the night before by getting stuck. So we took a really chill morning and just cleaned and reorganized everything and left kind of later in the afternoon. We had to motor most of the day because there wasn't really any wind. And then we noticed we were getting smoke out of our motors. So we did have to anchor. It's Mariatown Bay. It's kind of like a little um, nook area right off the St. Lawrence River. And um, kind of just out of the way of the main channel. It was kind of like a trailer park as well. So there's like a lot of people camping, um, but it was still really nice and quiet. We were the only boat that anchored there, um, but it was kind of as far as we could go because it did start to rain and storm. So this was the first time we ever anchored by ourselves and we were a little bit nervous like having experienced hitting the ground and stuff like that. Yeah, and our engine was smoking that morning. day and a lot of things have happened by this point. <laughs> yeah, so we were kind of a little nervous and anyways, we had went to sleep and because it was pretty open in the channel, like we were just outside of the main channel, all of a sudden I felt like a bunch of waves and I like immediately he <laughs> shot up through the top of the hatch like freaking out thinking we had like drifted out into the middle of the river or something like that but it ended up being one of the um big tall ships had like just went by so they had created a lot of wake and that was probably I don't know at like three in the morning so it's like pretty disoriented we were you were already like 
pretty nervous anyways yeah. to begin with like constantly checking and stuff and everything like oh i felt something are we drafting <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was uh that was definitely um kind of caught me off guard for sure <laughs> yeah it woke me up too it was it was quite a bump this is the first time we ever yeah. anchored wow although we're talking about it day four we did about uh 15 nautical miles it felt like a lot longer than it actually was just because it was like a big day. We actually had to go through the Iroquois locks and we ended up coming in just before a big tall ship came through. We ended up waiting there for about almost two hours, I guess, for that to all go through. The um, Iroquois locks was done a bit different. It is a Canadian lock and because of COVID, they actually had everybody paying through an app. So it's called the Sukunik. It's a pretty easy app to use. You just input your credit card information, your hall number, and your boat name. And I think for the Iroquois lock, it was about $20. So it's pretty easy when you get there. They know you're registered and you can just go in. It was a little bit different at this lock as well because there was no tie-ups because of COVID. So we just had to float in the middle, but it was only about two feet, so it wasn't too bad. So we pulled into the St. Lawrence Marina in Johnstown. We didn't get to video anything yesterday because all of our stuff pretty much died. So we had to come in here to get electricity. So we got everything plugged in and we're all pretty much ready to go. We're just gonna walk down to the store to get some bread. We got some ice yesterday. So we were actually able to have some, some cold things, which was nice. Um, but it's pretty calm today on the water. So we're probably gonna be motoring again today. That's what, pretty much what we did yesterday too. We um, had some smoke coming out of our engine yesterday and we messed around with it and it seems to be okay now. So we're gonna hope for the best and hope for no smoke today too. It's pretty calm on the water. So we just passed one of the bridges. It's pretty crazy too, like when we passed the bridge, there's been uh, no traffic on there because of COVID. And this is the first marina that we've come across that's been allowing people in because of COVID as well. Everything else is closed to visitors, so. Just be careful if you have a big draft because I think it was only about six feet. That's something to keep in consideration. But uh, yeah, we, this is the marina here. It's actually highly recommended. It's pretty affordable to stay here for the night. We actually only paid, it was like about 30 bucks, which is really nice. There's no like store for food or ice or anything, but it's about a kilometer walk into the gas station. So we went there yesterday and this morning to stock up, up on some stuff. Yeah, it's been a really, really nice spot. So if you're ever on the St. Lawrence River, try to aim this as one of your destinations because it's pretty affordable. My mom came down to Blockhouse to wave us off as we passed Brockville. Thousand 
trying to catch some wind because we're going to be going through some islands and we're probably not going to be able to sail at all because it's all tight, tiny channels, as you can see here. So we wanted to get some, a little bit of sailing in while we could. And then we, yeah, we just passed Brockville and Thousand Islands, a couple of marinas. Sailing. <laughs> we're neutral. Yeah. We're just we're just idling right now with the engine just because we're probably gonna have to use it so we don't want to turn it off but we wanted to yeah just put up our sails and enjoy not getting too much wind I gotta tighten it in. We had to put our sail away because we were not catching enough wind and we were pretty much standing still. Even with the motor going, the current's pretty strong. As you can see, we're not really moving <laughs> very fast at all. But it's really pretty in here. Looks like we're getting a storm in. Some dark clouds coming in. My mom messaged me to let me know that there's gonna be thunderstorms because she gets worried. So I think it is coming in this way. We're just motoring into Ivy Lee. Also, I don't know if you can see way up there. There's those big, big, big boats that give off a lot of wake and that's been really fun. There's been a lot of them in this channel right now and they give off a lot of heavy waves, so that's been interesting to sail through and boat through. Like I was talking about with these big boats, just look at these waves come out. We're gonna have to cut through them. Pretty crazy. I don't know if you can see them, but it's pretty, they're pretty big. This guy kind of slowed down for us, which is a lot nicer, but <laughs> this guy slowed down but a lot of them have not actually slowed down and they've given us huge waves so yep hear those big waves coming in these ones are way bigger didn't really slow down enough oh my goodness there's two of them too this is gonna be crazy jeez Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, pretty intense. I don't know what. There's a ton of these boats out here. Okay, it is really windy. There's a storm clouds underneath us. They were, was lightning, but it's kind of coming up the top of us now. It really windy like it's pushing our boat all over the place. <laughs> channel so that way we can kind of get out of it. The boat
boat was moving, moving <laughs> pretty crazy there for a bit. We were a bit nervous, but we should be fine. We might anchor if we have to, but Poor it's Kevin. okay. Yeah. Okay, storm is hit. It's wild back there. Can't even see almost. Just went through that. Just went through it. But we're out of it now. We want to keep going so that we can get out of this. Rain is crazy. Wind is crazy. It's freezing cold. It's pretty crazy, but we're just going to keep going and see what happens. And if we have to uh, anchor, we will do that. Okay, so the motor started smoking again. So we've turned it down a bit. It's still storming pretty heavy though. I think, I think we're, we kind of pretty much got out of most of it. But it's starting to lighten up a little bit. We've got a little bit of sunshine coming through the clouds. So hopefully that would have been the end of it. It is freezing and it's super windy. It's the first storm in the sailboat though. <laughs> okay. Sailing through the Thousand Islands is gorgeous. Rockport is beautiful. Yeah, we just passed kind of Rockport area. There's a little gas station in Rockport and a little restaurant it's like. We passed all that, but we've been sailing through here and just seeing super beautiful houses. Like just beautiful, it's all windows. And just gorgeous anchoring areas too. There's another sailboater over there that we passed. I think a lot of people must come down here with their sailboats because it's so beautiful. And it's deep. It's like 180 feet, this whole channel. Yeah. We're just putting around and there's the another bridge of the states again. Um, empty. Oh wait, no, there's a transport. There. There's a transport, nice. Oh yeah, there's a statue up there. Uh, I'm already zoomed in as far as I can. Yeah, it's crazy. Like. It's just so nice in here. Like, look at that house. It's so pretty. Just pretending to be rich for the day. <laughs> I mean, we are rich. We got a yacht. Yeah. So we're just again still in the Thousand Islands, just past Rockport. But we're going to be uh, anchoring down. There's all these pretty little pretty waterfalls. And then we're going to try to anchor right in there. It's a gorgeous house too. We're gonna try to anchor kind of just in here. It's called Bucks Bay, but it looks like it's a really good spot to anchor. It looks like that boat's trying to anchor in there too actually now. So we found our anchor ring for the night. This is Bucks Bay. It's so cute. This is probably like the prettiest spot we've anchored. The last few times we've been just anchoring super late at night to kind of sail and motor pretty much most of the day. We actually climbed that tower before. That's actually Hill Island. Yeah, it's really nice in here. <laughs> it's just fell. It's actually so pretty in here. It's pretty deep, but we put out a lot of an anchor. So hopefully we'll be fine. We'll just wait to see, make sure we don't drift. But it's super cute in here. Thought we'd uh, anchor down early. I mean, the storms look like they passed now, but better be safe than sorry. And then now we can actually make some dinner. Go for a swim. Just anchored in for the night with our loon buddy. Just past Rockport for Dan. There's the bridge over there. Yeah, if you guys can ever boat through Rockport, I recommend it. It's beautiful. There's like tons of gorgeous houses like that all over the place. Absolutely stunning rainbow. Just started raining. You can see the whole thing from here. It's so pretty. Alex was fishing off the end, but I think he's given up. I oh, you're, you're still out there? Oh, you went to the other side. There he is. I need like a little worm. <laughs> it's so nice. It's still raining a little bit, but oh my god, it's so cool. 
This is like probably one of my favorite anchorages that we've done so far. So day five, we did 32 nautical miles. We started at St. Lawrence Marina in Johnstown and anchored at Bucks Bay, just outside of Rockport. I'm going through our first storm. We were quite nervous when the wind was pushing the boat. We didn't even have the sails up. We had taken them down and the wind was pushing our boat, making us heel over, which was crazy considering we didn't have sails up. And we lucked out too because we were originally supposed to be right in the main part of the St. Lawrence River. But uh, we had seen a cute little trail off the river that kind of took you through some like pretty houses and we just looked out that that's where we were when it hit because if we'd have been in the main channel, it would have been crazy and it would have been like way wavier and way stronger winds. And then because we had been having so much problems with the motor, with using it so hard, we ended up having um, some smoke again, which is unfortunate. So we were happy to be out of there and then the sun came out. We went for a little swim and it was a really, really peaceful anchorage. Um, nobody else was there. It was super quiet and we would definitely go back and anchor there for sure. Our last and final day to get us to our destination, Collins Bay Marina. We traveled 32 nautical miles, traveled right into Lake Ontario for the very first time and got all the way to Collins Bay before the sun went down, which was actually really lucky because we didn't have any lights for um, navigation at night at the time. And we weren't sure that we were gonna make it there um, by day six. So we really lucked out. getting ready to rain the main sail so I'm gonna turn into the wind there we go it just makes a lot less resistance on the sail whenever you're actually raising it because the winds coming in front of you instead of from the side or vice versa from behind you. You just never really want the wind coming in from the side of the sail whenever you're raising it. it. Makes it a lot harder. That's how you know when you're good, when it starts to luff like that, you're pretty much dead wind or downwind. And then whenever she gives me the go ahead that the sail is cranked enough, I can turn back. All right, so now head back into the wind and you'll see it start to fill up. All right, there we go. Just a touch more. Finally got a little wind. We are sailing into Kingston. That's Kingston up there. Yeah, we were waiting for this wind all day. Finally got it. Oh yeah, baby. It's all the windmills. bunch of other sailboats out today they were waiting for the same thing that we were let's go there we are we're a little bit closer now give you a little better view I'm pretty sure it's coming up all black anyways but still getting pretty good wind moving probably I don't know four knots there's one of the ferry ships over there taking suckers back to work or to work. 
And here we are, just sailing. Here's Crystal, man in the main sail, or woman in the main sail, trying to keep us on course here while I'm steering. But yeah, we're constantly, the wind's constantly changing, so you have to let the sail out or in a little more. So that's what she's doing there. But yeah, we're making time, man. I thought we'd be at Collins Bay tomorrow, and we're gonna make it there tonight, 100%. So we lost our wind, and we're very close to Kingston now. We wanna get a little bit closer to uh, take a better view. Also, I'm letting loose of the main halyard while Crystal's up there pulling her down. And again, you wanna aim into the wind or downwind, either or. Whenever you're doing this, it makes it a lot easier of a job for them. She's gonna pull it down there. I'm gonna keep giving her slack. And then she's gonna detach the main halyard and hook it off to the side. Otherwise, the whole time you're boating, that thing's gonna bang, bang, bang into the wind. It's really annoying. And then once she's got it tightened up, and she's gonna come back eventually and lock in the main halyard. <laughs> Beautiful. My job's done. And yeah, now she's gonna wrap it all up, make it all pretty. I can turn the motor back on and we can get a beautiful view of Kingston. There's Fort Henry there. Yeah, we've never really seen this, uh, this side of Kingston before. The wind was working with us for a while, but she quit. Just passing Kingston. Captain of the ship. Hey. <laughs> this is kind of, we just motored all the way through Kingston. We were sailing, but we kind of wanted to see what Kingston looked like from a different angle, so. Lost the wind, too. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that first brown building was my very first apartment. And there's the St. Lawrence College. So we're just kind of, just getting into Kingston now. So cool. Heading into Lake Ontario is like, look at that, it looks like an ocean almost. You can't see anything. A little sailboat over there. Beautiful day. We've arrived back in Collins Bay, our final stop. This is where we're going to be keeping our boat. It's super pretty here too. It's a really nice sunset. We were a little nervous coming in because our charts all said that it was going to be like two feet deep, but it was fine. Pop on and uh, can... Oh, I'm just going to have to delete that out. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for staying with us and watching our journey back from Quebec to bring your boat back to Kingston. We had a lot of fun, learned a lot of really good things. And uh, it's the first, second day of spring today. So we just got back from untarping our boat and we're going yeah. to uh, get some new footage going eventually because we, we have our boat launch in about a month, I guess. Less than that, about 20 days, I think. Yeah. We got our boat back in the water and see so yeah, how we were just taking the tarp off today doing some things that we could once the sun's finally shining and we had a couple mistakes happen that we have uh, some videos and stuff that you guys can see in the future more just, excited just to get back out there yeah just excited to get our boat back it, it was a nice feeling getting back out there today yeah thanks for watching everyone keep hitting that like button keep subscribing yeah keep following us on our journey and uh, here's some footage of the ice melting on Lake Ontario yeah it looks gorgeous right now
we're drinking down there.